stuck to that. It means you don't have to believe in the, in the prophets of Salaam or you don't have to believe in the Quran. Which is not correct. Because this ayat is being revealed in the Quran. So if you don't believe in the Quran, you may don't need to believe in this ayat also. So the ayat will not apply to you anyway. Okay? So you have to believe in the Quran because the Quran is the one who is telling you what the belief process is. Okay? So you have to believe in the, in the Quran and you cannot believe in Quran and reject the Prophet. So you have to believe in the Prophet that he is a messenger. So all these things are connected. You cannot just isolate one ayat of the Quran and do interpretation. The, the whole thing has to be gone, followed together. So in the beginning there is who believed, Amani. In the Lazina, Amani. Yeah, this is about Muslims only. And those Muslims already supposed to believe in all of those five things. Right. So, so what, what was happening? There. Yes, they have already believed. But Quran is including in them those people also because in the Lazina, Amani are the Muslims. They have already believed in everything. But now Quran is saying, those and these, all the people, have to believe in these following things. Question. So, we are talking about Muslims, mm. then we are talking about Yehud and Asara, mm. and a group of Sabin. Mm. From those who believe in Allah, and believe on the Day of Judgment, mm. and do the good deeds. But they, they have to believe in this ayat, right? So they have to believe in the Quran. Otherwise, uh, this ayat, Prophet saying that this Quran is from Allah. This book is from Allah. So, and the people cannot say, okay, we believe in this ayat, but we don't believe what you are saying, which is the Quran. So they automatically they have to believe the Quran. And you cannot say, I believe in the Quran, but I don't believe in this Prophet. That will not work either, because he is the one who is telling with his tongue that you have to trust the man either. So it's all, all logical understanding is. But the, as I said, do not isolate one ayat. You have to keep the whole Quran in front of you to understand one ayat from the other ayat. In other places, there are more details about in what other things you have to believe. Okay, so this is just a brief. Okay. Then, so, so the meaning is that in the last day, and the day, and the day, and last day, you can say day of judgment. Aren't there two days, Yom al and Yom al -Khiyama? Same thing. Well, Yom al when everybody dies, Yom al No, Yom al is, is the day of judgment. Then, so this is the belief, so, but belief alone is not enough. After believing, you have to work. Okay? And that is the wa amila salihan. So these root letters are ayin, neem, and naam. This means to do. Okay? In this case, it is Amila. He did. So it seems like follow. Right, but there, there are three categories of work. The middle letter changes Fatah, Kasra, and Dhamma. In this case, middle letter takes Kasra. So it is it is Fala, but in this case, this meme is a so it is actually Faila in this case. Faila. Meaning is same, past tense, third person. He did. Wa amila and he did. Okay. Now the next word is fad, lam, and ha. This means to do good.
So the word Salehun is the word. Salehun. This means good deed. It also means good person. It has both meanings. A good deed or a good person. Saleh, we give name to people. Saleh means good people, good person. Okay? And Saleh means good deed also. So now, if we combine these two, Amela and Salehun, Miss Amela, he did Salehun good deed or good action. But what one thing will happen whenever a noun comes after a verb, okay, then two of them must change into two fathas. And whenever we write two fathas, we also write an extra alif with that. So this word will be written as Salehun. Dhammas to Dhammas change into two fatas and you add in an alif there, like this one. That's because it is a verb. The, the two Dhammas, two fatas are not written without alif. It's just a writing style. We're doing that because there is a uh, noun after the verb. Right. right. Salehun is a noun and this is a verb. So whenever a noun comes after the verb, Two dhammas change into two fathas, but for writing purpose you need alif in there. And you pronounce salehan. Okay? Salehan means Amila salehan, and he did good actions or good deeds. Or good deeds. So the condition is that whoever believed, and he also did good deeds. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now here it is, it is very briefly mentioned. There is no list of the good deeds because Quran is full of what the good deeds are. Here just a mention, a brief reference is made, good deed. Okay, and then you have to find out what are the or what is the definition of good deeds in, in, from the Quran and from the Sunnah. So if person does that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fa la hum. Three words. So, fa means so, la means for, and hum means them. So for them. So for them means for those people who will do this thing, who will believe and who will do good deeds. So for them, okay. What is for them? Next word is alif, jim, and ra. Ajara. It means to pay or to reward someone. To pay or to reward. And the noun from this is Ajrun. Ajrun means reward. Okay. Ajrun is the word. Always remember that all the nouns always end up with two dhammas here. Like we saw Swalehun. Two dhammas, ajurun, two dhammas. So whenever there's a noun, it always ends with two dhammas. Okay? Whom is also means them or their. Ajurun and whom. If you will combine these two, one dhamma is not pronounced and it becomes ajurohum. Ajarohum is their reward.
their reward. So the reward of these people who believed and who did good deeds. Then there is a reward for them. Okay. Aj rohum, their reward. Okay. Then the next word is, starts with ra, ba and ba. Okay. This means to provide. Ra ba ba means to provide. Okay. <coughs> and the noun from this is Rabbun. Rabbun means provider. Provider. It's a noun again with the two dhammas. This word is also translated as God. Rabbun is the word. Original word is Rabbun. Rabbun means Lord, provider, sustainer. Okay. And again, combined with whom means there. Okay. So when you combine, it will be their Lord. And when we combine, then one Dhamma on this is not pronounced. It becomes Rabbohum, like Ajrohum. Rabbohum. So this becomes Rabbohum. One Dhamma only on Ba instead of two. Rabbohum, their Lord. Rabbohum, their Lord. Okay, now in the means with, in the means with, in the is a herpager and what herpager does changes the match with kasra on the noun. Okay, standard rule that you just saw that. Wherever there is a harpeger, and harpeger in English are prepositions. So whenever a preposition comes before a noun, it changes dhamma to a kasra. So now the word will be in the in the rabbo hum. So it becomes rabbi because of in the. Home. For for the recitation and tajweed, this dhamma here is also pronounced as a kasra, just for the ease on the tongue. There is no grammatical rule for that. This is just pure recitation. So if you pronounce rabbi him, it is easy to come out of the tongue. So tajweed changes this dhamma into a kasra. This Dhamma is changed by the Harfajar into a Kasra and this Dhamma is changed into a Kasra for the Tajweed, for the recitation, for the ease of reading. So the word becomes Aindara Bihim with their Lord. So their reward is with their Lord. And then after that it says Vala Vala and not. Okay. Va means and and la means not. The next word is ha, wa, and fa, and this means to fear. Ha, wa, and fa means to fear, to have a fear of something. So the noun from this will be how fun. 
Often means fear. Again, as I said, the nouns always end up with two dhammas, and they sound like un, how fun. So, wala how fun, and no fear. No fear. Wala how fun, the whole word how fun is there. Nothing changed how fun. How fun remains how fun. Okay. And there will not be any fear. Okay. And the next word is Alaihim. So this is made of Allah plus whom. Allah means upon and whom means them. Or there, them is also correct. Okay. Allah and whom? Okay. When you combine these, write them together. This ayn, lam, and this ya can be written with like this. Alay. Okay. And the next word is whom. But again, for the recitation. Because this is a ya, which is sound of kasra, this is pronounced as him, alai him, upon them. There will be no fear upon them. Means these people will not be fearful. This this is the sound of alif on lam, right? Mm. This is the sound of fata. Mm. Okay, so how would you pronounce alai? There is no other way to pronounce alai. To pronounce the fata with the kia, lai, ali. Okay. But because of it is fata, it's a lai. I guess our point is ya and uh, that uh, fata mm. is just ala. Because you use alif um, and just you can put it on ya, but ya doesn't really sound. Right. So this thing is called alifa maksura. Yeah. Okay. Ya is not pronounced, it is written. Okay. So this whole thing is a, is a ya maksura, which is a mm -hmm. ya alif. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it is written this way. Mm -hmm. But when you are combining these two, then you have to pronounce, pr pronounce this ya. So when you combine, you combine with the ya yeah, with the two dots there, and your sound will be alai. And whom will change him only because that we because it, easy pronunciation. Is it Allah and then changes to him? No, no. Pronounce cannot change. Okay, yeah. Only nouns change. Yeah. So alai him is upon them. And again, wala whom and not they. In words, not they. Okay, the last word is yahazanun. Okay, so let's look at that word. So this is haza and noon. Hazana means to be said or to grieve. To grieve or to be sad. Hazana. Okay. Now, if we have these three letters, fa and nam, which means to do, and if we put a ya in the beginning and a muna at the end, okay. with a fata, and keep the middle letters fa, and and lam, yaf aluna, okay. from the grammar table, yaf aluna means they do. So that's how we make the grammar of third person plural and present tense or future tense. 
both are correct. They will do. It has both the meanings, present and future. Yaf aluna. So you add a ya in the beginning of three letters and vuna at the end. And you pronounce yaf aluna. They do or they will do. If you apply this grammar on these three letters, then you have a ya in the beginning and guna at the end. And the middle three letters are ha, za, and nu. Okay. And you put the same harakas here. Yahazanuna. Yahazanuna is the word. Yahazanuna means they will be sad or they will grieve. Yahazanuna, they will be sad or they will grieve. But there is a la before that which means they will not grieve, they will not be sad. Okay? So the word is Yahazanuna. That's the reason you see in the Quran there is a fata on noon. Yahazanuna, because by the rule of the grammar, this noon has a fata on it. Okay? But when you stop at the ayat, you pronounce Yahazanun. You do not pronounce Yahazanuna. You may pronounce Yahazanuna is correct. There is nothing wrong. You can pronounce Yahazanuna. But if the next ayat continues and you are not start stopping, then you can pronounce this Yahazanuna. But if you want to stop here, you to take a breath, you can stop and say Yahazanun. Okay? So they will not be grieved. Will not be said. Will not grieve. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising two things for them. Those who believe in the day in Allah and day of judgment. Their reward is with their Lord, but there are two things that they will not have. One is that they will not have fear. And they will not be sad or they will not grieve. Remember that these are the promises of the hereafter. Both of these promises are for the hereafter. In this world, all of us will be sad. All of us will grieve. All of us will have fear. doesn't matter if it is a prophet or a common person. They all will go through the tests of this world, which include the fear and the grief and the sadness. Okay? So these are the promises that will happen in the hereafter. In the hereafter, the reward of the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be that people will not have fear. Those who are given the, the, the maqfira, they will have no fear after that. They will not worry about anything after that. And also they will not be sad about anything. So these are the promises. And this ayat comes many, many places in the Quran. This ayat means this part of the ayat. Several places it repeats exactly this way. And with a different context, with a different subject. But always try to understand that these are not the promises, these two promises are only for the hereafter. There are other promises. Uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives reward in this world to whoever he wants to. But even the best person who is the most obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a part of his test or her test, he or she will go through the grief and fear in this world life. Okay? So that is the explanation of this ayah. Okay? How, how do we know that it is uh, in the hereafter? Like, just reading through the ayah, it doesn't give the impression. Which impression that? That uh, the, the no fear part is in the hereafter, and it's not for the worldly. Okay, first of all, the, from our experience, we know that. From the worldly experience that we live through, 
we know that everyone has to have some time, one or the other time, some kind of fear or some kind of hazan or, or grief. So that means this promise, either this promise has to be fulfilled and if it is not fulfilling here, that means it has to be fulfilled somewhere else. So this is from the logical explanation and understanding that this is what the ayat is saying. Also, the whole thing is believe in Akhirah. What's that? The whole idea is to believe in Akhirah, part of our being. Right. If you believe in Akhirah, you have to have Ajir or... Yeah. So that's the part of it. Yeah. So, inshallah, we'll stop here. We have the top last minute.